Welcome to this video on hypoxia and oxygen content. Hypoxia may be defined as either an inadequate oxygen supply or the inability to utilise oxygen at the cellular level. Number one, hypoxic hypoxia. This is where the PaO2 is less than 12 kilopascals. We see this in the following where there is a low fraction of inspired oxygen content, hypoventilation, for example, in opioid use, diffusion impairment, as we'd see in pulmonary edema, VQ mismatch, which might be caused by COPD or asthma, or shunt, which occurs in atelectasis. Number two, anemic hypoxia. This is where there is a normal PaO2, but inadequate oxygen carrying capacity. This occurs where there is a low circulating haemoglobin level in the acute and chronic anemias, and where there is a normal circulating haemoglobin, but reduced ability of that haemoglobin to carry oxygen. And this would occur in carbon monoxide poisoning. Number three, stagnant hypoxia. This is where there is a normal PaO2 and oxygen carrying capacity, but reduced tissue and organ perfusion. And this occurs in cardiogenic shock. Number four, histotoxic hypoxia. This is where there is a normal PaO2, oxygen carrying capacity and tissue perfusion, but inability of tissues to utilise the oxygen at a mitochondrial level. And this occurs in cyanide poisoning. Now we will look at the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curves showing arterial and mixed venous saturation points in the four types of hypoxia. Number one, hypoxic hypoxia. PaO2 is reduced. By definition, the PaO2 will be less than 12 kilopascals in hypoxic hypoxia. Typically, we may see an arterial PaO2 in the region of 7.2 kilopascals. In addition, PVO2 is reduced with a venous desaturation of less than 75%. Number two, anemic hypoxia. The PaO2 remains normal with a value of 13.3 kilopascals. However, Global oxygen delivery is reduced due to reduced oxygen content. Therefore, the result is increased oxygen extraction and venous desaturation. Number three, stagnant hypoxia. Here, we will see that the PaO2 and PVO2 are normal. However, the tissues and organs do not receive the oxygenated blood due to perfusion failure. Number four, histotoxic hypoxia. Here, we will see that the PaO2 is normal. However, in this type of hypoxia, cells are unable to utilize oxygen, which results in high venous saturations. We will now discuss oxygen content. What is oxygen content? Oxygen is carried in the blood in two main ways. Firstly, combined with haemoglobin, and also the oxygen that is dissolved in the plasma. Oxygen content is equal to oxygen bound to haemoglobin plus dissolved oxygen. Bound oxygen can be calculated by multiplying the content of haemoglobin with Huffner's constant multiplied by the oxygen saturations and dissolved oxygen can be calculated by multiplying the partial pressure of oxygen by 0.0225 
typical oxygen content. Arterial oxygen content. Typically, a person will have a haemoglobin of 15 grams per deciliter, oxygen saturations of 100%, with a partial pressure of arterial oxygen of 13.3 kilopascals. Therefore, for calculating the oxygen bound to haemoglobin, we will multiply 15 by 1.34, Huffner's constant, multiplied by 1, which represents oxygen saturations of 100%. And then for the oxygen dissolved in plasma, we multiply the partial pressure of arterial oxygen, 13.3 kilopascals, by 0.0225. We then have the value of 20.1, which is the oxygen bound to haemoglobin, and the value of 0.3, which is the value of oxygen dissolved in the plasma. This gives us a total of 20.4 mils of oxygen per deciliter. And we can do the same for venous oxygen content. In a typical venous sample, we'll have a haemoglobin of 15 grams per deciliter, venous saturations of 75%, and a PVO2, or partial pressure of venous blood, of 5.3 kilopascals. And by substituting the values into the oxygen content equation, we come to a value of 15.2 mils of oxygen per deciliter of venous blood. Oxygen delivery. Oxygen delivery is equal to oxygen content multiplied by cardiac output. If we say that the circulating volume for a typical 70 kilogram person is 80 mils per kilogram, this would give us a value of 5.6 litres. This equates to an arterial oxygen content of just over 1 litre and a venous oxygen content of approximately 750 mils. Before we go on to discussing the oxygen content in the four different types of hypoxia, we will just remind ourselves that the typical oxygen content of arterial blood is 20 mils of oxygen per deciliter, and the typical oxygen content of venous blood is 5 mils of oxygen per deciliter. We will now look at the oxygen content in the four types of hypoxia. 1. Hypoxic hypoxia. Here, we would see that the arterial oxygen content is reduced and there is increased oxygen extraction resulting in a lower venous oxygen content. Anemic hypoxia. Here, we see a significant reduction in arterial oxygen content and therefore there is reduced oxygen delivery to the tissues. There will be a resultant increase in cardiac work in an attempt to maintain oxygen delivery. Stagnant hypoxia. Here we see a normal arterial oxygen content. However, there is inadequate oxygen delivery to the tissues and this may mean that venous oxygen saturations are increased. Histotoxic hypoxia. Arterial oxygen content is normal. However, there is an inability to utilise oxygen at the cellular level. This will result in high venous oxygen content. Thank you for watching this video.